We are facing the biggest crisis in our history. My life just ended for no good reason. We're in the middle of an epic rebirth. Her sell-by date expired years ago. I want you to start grooming some new people. I don't fit the mold. What mold is that? Any mold, really. Your show sucks. Thank you. It's Thank barely you. news. I want wardrobe tests, screen tests, makeup tests. We need a contract. Where's legal? Ready? I'm ready. Most people want to trust that the person that is telling them about the world is an honest person. Like you. But what was it for you that made you feel that this was just a great, uh, well, not only a great role, but a great format to see behind the news in a morning show? Well, I thought, you know, it's a very rich world, and when we first started developing it, we had no idea the Me Too movement was going to happen. Yeah. So right in the middle of doing it, everything changed. Yeah. And so all of our scripts changed, all of our characters changed, and it became this, it felt like a show that was culturally uh, important. Mm -hmm. It was actually asking questions, pulling back the curtain on what it really feels like to be on any side of it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a human side of everything, as my character says. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, gosh, it's just a, a great time to be exploring what the news means to people. Mm. But it must be interesting, you know, here I am asking you the questions, but uh, you play someone that is asking the questions. Yeah. Was that an interesting reversal for someone that's usually on the other side? <laughs> yeah, it was weird. <laughs> It was weird. I had to ask all the questions and be very prepared with my questions. And um, but it was good. It gave me insight to what it's like to be a journalist a little bit. And I mean, I looked back at a lot of interviews with Oprah and Diane Sawyer and Katie Couric. So mm. I felt like I was really seeing um, how the greats conduct an interview. Yeah, I just need to be able to control the narrative so that I'm not written out of it. Is the undisputed? You stole my life. You left me in the woods with a pack of wolves. You just think I'm gonna do this? This chair could be yours. I don't want your job. Oh, honey, well... walk out that door, you are never going to get back in. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, you, you've been a producer, or are a producer, you've been involved in a lot of projects. What is different about this and now that we're looking at a streaming service, Apple TV, they've come out with a guns blazing of what they're going to do. Is that exciting for you as a producer and an actor? Oh, for sure. I think the emergence of the streaming world has really made room for different kinds of storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, at the major studios for so many years, they only worked with this same sort of handful of people and to be very honest it was a lot of guys and if they didn't write a story with you in mind then you didn't get a job so um, the emergence of streaming is like this opportunity for new voices and fresh storytelling that I find so refreshing mm -hmm. and it's welcomed this great age of real creativity and I'm loving every minute of it. It's so <laughs> like I hope it doesn't end because it's um it's nice to have yeah. different kinds of stories on screens. And just finally, uh, obviously, you have worked with Jennifer Aniston once before. Yes. What is that relationship being like now? To be well, I played Jen's sister in Friends yeah. for two episodes in 1999. I remember because I had a little baby on set. <laughs> Her name was <laughs> Ava, and now she's 20. Um, and it was just great because we've kept up our friendship over the years, and then getting this opportunity to really go head to head and talk about different ideas in feminism or what is female power or leadership um, to be able to do that with Jen was so refreshing and it's just nice to be able to talk to a professional woman that I respect so much about these big ideas of how the world is changing.